be magical if you could find the words that made people buy, that made people click on the ads, that made the sale. I can't give you the specific words for your business, but I can give you a formula for finding them and mastering that language, how to speak to your customers so they convert. This is the Business Income Gain series. I'm Alec from Easier Habits. I help overthinking entrepreneurs and turn their procrastination and anxiety into unstoppable execution. And right now we are going over how to use a free tool, the Business Income Gain Spreadsheet, link below, to speak your customer's language and drive conversion. Before we dive into speaking your customer's language, I wanted to do a quick recap of this course. This is the Business Income Gains course. I'm showing you how to use a free resource, the Business Income Gains Spreadsheet, link below, so that you can find the one business strategy to focus on that will have the biggest impact on your business. You don't wanna be so overwhelmed with potential strategies that you're procrastinating or so overwhelmed with potential strategies that you're jumping from strategy to strategy and never seeing results. So this is a tool that will help you focus on the strategy that can give you the biggest impact on your company. Now, how are we doing that? We're using a streamlined set of financials. It's not everything you have to know about your company, but it's enough to make some decent, quick projections of impact on your company. And we're also using a very specific customer avatar, a specific individual we have in mind that's our ideal customer. And obviously you can validate that. We'll actually show a little bit of market research and validation in a moment. And uh, you take that customer and you can use that, apply that to your business strategy. So not only do you know what area of the business to work on in general to get more money, but you know specifically how to do it. You have some direction. All of this is to help you focus and have direction because Building your own business can be overwhelming at times and the business income gain spreadsheet can simplify that for you. Specifically today, we will dive into ads. We talked a little bit about targeting ads in the find your avatar section. We'll talk this week. I'll go through an example strategy of improving your ad header and image using your customer avatar, how to do some market research and then forecast the impact of those ads on our business. There are other strategies. The list here for speaking your customer's language so they convert is not exhaustive. These are just common examples. Uh, ads, especially the header and image, have the most impact. Content, marketing and copy and images. Landing page, again, especially header and images have a huge impact. And lead magnet. Each of these strategies is tied to specific customer avatar questions that you can answer to give you insight. Now you can draw inspiration from anywhere in your user avatar, but I thought it would be helpful for you when you're thinking about how to improve your ads to have a few specific questions to think about. And so for example, with the ad strategy, questions eight, nine, and 10 are who or what does your customer aspire to be? What's the problem you're solving for them? And what's the emotional need behind that? problem? Why does it matter to them? It doesn't have to be touchy-feely. It's just getting at the need. Not, not just they want to do something, but why is doing that thing important for them? In the examples we're talking about, we're using the e-commerce financial example. It's not a perfect company. It is a smaller company. Average conversion has to spend a ton to acquire customers and as such definitely needs a lot of help with its ads. So we're going to fill that out specifically in this video series. I'm doing a direct consumer keto cereal example of, of the e-commerce website. And our customer avatar is Ted, someone who learned about keto and slow carbs from Tim Ferriss's books and interviews. And he wants to get on a keto diet in order to have more energy to grok work. Um, do people still use that? That was a funny phrase used in Silicon Valley for a short period of time. But uh, that, uh, and I think by game developers and other things, this is where it came from. Anyway, tangent. So uh, he wants to be a high performer at work and then potentially build his confidence to start his own business or uh, go out, be a consultant, do something on his own. So uh, that is Ted. He's our avatar. And... 
we're thinking about using the ad strategy, right? So we want to find language that ties into his aspirations or uh, his problems, his needs for his header. We already know that he likes Tim Ferriss. So let's go ahead and go to Twitter and see what people are saying about Tim Ferriss and keto. And some of these are not gonna be your target audience. So uh, this person says, red flags in men, Tim Ferriss and keto. <laughs> Um, what I'm looking for right now as I'm scrolling through these and it's the most riveting video you've ever seen is I'm looking specifically for someone who talks about their needs or aspirations around keto new things all right here's here's one thing okay that I found currently using Tim Ferriss's plan close to keto to shed a few pounds that does signal that they're not a um, that they're not necessarily exactly Ted, right? They're doing it for diet, not for energy reasons. The fog, not that bad on it. So the, the brain fog that you would get from changing diets, that might affect Ted, right? And here's, you know, what I would do is, and I'm not gonna make you sit through hours of me scrolling Twitter. I'd go through uh, this search. I might go to Tim Ferriss's tweets on keto and check the comments. I would look at other influencers, etc., And I'd collect all these sorts of comments about the difficulties like brain fog that people experience with keto um, or their aspirations and then compile it. And I'd do that until I just kept seeing the same things over and over again. And then I'd pick the things that seem the most common aspirations or the most pressing and driving aspirations or the biggest problems, etc., And then use, put those in the in the headline. For now, just for sake of speed, we'll go with like brain fog, right? Keto cereal. Um, and, and that idea seems like it would resonate with Ted, right? He's doing it for mental clarity, but you know, if there's brain fog when you're transitioning to the diet, that can be very difficult. So it seems like this might resonate with Ted since he's doing what he's doing for energy. If he runs into brain fog, that would be really difficult because that's the exact opposite of his goal, right? And if he has to pass through that to, um, you know, pass through that to get what he wants, that makes it really more difficult, more less likely that he'll achieve. Um, and we can talk about how, you know, this slow carb cereal will help you adjust to a keto diet, solve your munchies, uh, fill your munchies, whatever, satiate your munchies, uh, and avoid brain fog or something like that. So uh, again, uh, I would take these ideas. I would probably then go specifically research various headline ideas, like best practices. For instance, I've heard people say this result this time, like drop into keto in three days or two days without brain fog with keto cereal or something, whatever, right? And then I would take the principle that I'm doing, the brain fog, the, the avoid brain fog, and then adapt it. Uh, if my my cereal can in fact do that. I'm not like, I'm not advocating that you lie or just like grab something that's not true of your cereal. This is a hypothetical. So assuming that the cereal is compatible with a slow carb diet, uh, avoids, you know, brain fog, etc. You could do that. So uh, we have a ad header that speaks to their problems. Images very often are aspirational or if like if they're an ad, um, they generally are aspirational. You might be a contrarian and you might look for like an ad that illustrates a horrible problem and really gets people's attention. You know, we'll see. You don't know if you want your product associated with that, but um, who knows, maybe that works. Maybe there's someone who's really made that work, but we'll look for an aspirational image since we have a problem header and kind of do a, you know, it's almost like good cop, bad cop. And so one example of something we can do is if we know that our user avatar is a fan of Tim Ferriss, we'll go to Tim Ferriss's Instagram and we'll look at what's popular on his Instagram. So he has a picture of himself balancing a pencil over his lip, eh, with a thousand likes. Um, these images of other people from his podcasts, not, you know, hundreds, so not very much. All right, this image, someone dancing, sweet hand spin, right? Great, that 11,000, likes that's pretty big um is that like burning man or something a crazy helmet okay like invention um the mushrooms mushrooms are popular with his audience 
Um, here's kind of another fitness one, 17,000. So fitness is a big aspirational thing. Um, hedgehog, 5,000. That's, you know, pretty big. 21K. All right. That is interesting. Strangely, like a lot of engagement just on the sentence. So I might go in and take a look at, you know, maybe an all text image would stand out like this. That's it. It depends on the context of advertising, right? If you're on a list of advertisements with images, having all text kind of stands out like these ones do, um, et cetera. And the highlighting makes it more engaging. I don't know. Um, all right, what others? Uh, almost 6,000 on a dog. That's pretty high. There's uh, the books have thousands. All right, so sign of work him, you know, making a <gasps> surprise face with his books. Uh, it's kind of a sign of success. So we have several themes we can pull from already from Tim Ferriss. And again, I would go and check, I, I might go into the comments and really see which one of these not just gets the most likes or whatever hearts, but like resonates the most with people and why. So I really understood it. I'd understand my avatar better, could go back and actually update my avatar with these specifics, you know, check out other profiles as well. So, but that's just an example of how you can use your user avatar. If you know the influencers groups, the places they go to research, you can go there and get ideas for your business strategies uh, and validate your user, right? And so, um, you know, I, I hadn't, discuss the pet aspect, but if that's a big thing for Ted and the, and his his segment, or maybe that's just an Instagram thing, I don't know, but right, that might be something that I have to, I might want to include in my user avatar. His his aspirational self includes, you know, working from home with his pet. Maybe that's my, pic, my image, right? Uh, some kind of image of success, having produced something, um, you know, on his computer and then sitting back with some keto cereal and his dog or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but that's, that's an example. We've generated a lot of ideas. Uh, the point is not to create a specific ad copy, but I think you can follow the train of thought from here's my avatar, here's their goals and the influencers, here's how we could go to the places they are with influencers, groups, etc collect that language and then apply that to our business strategy. When we get down to forecasting, what we're forecasting is not that the first ad we run is gonna have a huge impact on the business, but what we're forecasting is that if we experiment and master this or get better at this, we can create certain achievable gains and we'll keep our guesstimates relatively small. We'll rein them in, we'll keep them conservative again and they're achievable because I, if I knock it out of the park, great. If I get my results, my one to three percent results quickly, I could like double down and then improve or tweak more and get more results or combine that with a different strategy, find you know more targeted ads and better ads. Perfect, right? And play around with that. Um, but what I don't want you to do is have pie in the sky goals and then get overwhelmed and then just stop working on it or or lose your momentum. So you don't want to do that. One to three goals, uh, one to three percent goals are often enough. And then we'll see what shakes out in the calculation, which will make reasonable calculations. So I will go ahead and forecast two things. The first thing that I'm going to forecast is an initial ad run to kind of get a sense of uh, if I create such and such an ad, when will it pay for itself? So if I, let's see, it's not going to increase organic leads, because this is a paid strategy, if I increased uh, the paid traffic, right, um, 3%, or that would be about uh, do, 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 3,600, that'd be about 3,600 right there. Um, how much would my conversion rate improve? All right, and I'm going to show these kind of totals. How much would my conversion rate improve? Um, I'm hope this is overall conversion rate, i.e. out of everyone who ever gets on the site, how many of them buy our percentage. So I can do a gut feeling, but it's probably going to be pretty low since this is a small percentage. But if we say 36, I, I get 3,600 people on my site with ads. So they've clicked through the ads. Those people click through the ads. And let's say these ads get them to convert at 4% instead of 3%. 
3.2%. Yeah, around 1% increase. Uh, not quite, but somewhat close. All right, a 1% increase in conversion rate. Let's see, how much would the cost to acquire a lead go down? I already know that 3,600 is such a small portion of my traffic that I'm not going to increase the overall traffic. Uh, it's impressive that I could, with just 3,600 people, increase the overall conversion rate. So um, how much more operational cost would I have? And basically what I've gotten is if I ran an ad that converted at 4% and got at least 3,600 people into it, it would pay me almost $3,000. So I could assume, for instance, that I could make or make a bet, right? If I invest $2,500 in ad copy before finding one that converts at 4%, right? And then I let I scale that one up so it gets $3,600 uh, people in traffic that convert at 4%. I will at least have covered my costs, right? Or maybe, you know, 2000 or whatever it is, right? And so for operational costs, right? If I'm making this, if this ad with 36, eventually getting 3,600 people, uh, converting a, at 4%, so an overall 0.03% increase in my total conversion rate, you know, how much money would that make? And it's already factoring in the cost to acquire those leads. I'm, it's assuming that, that that traffic will be acquired at, you know, $2. Um, how much more operational costs would I have? Well, I have the cost of running the ads. And this is telling me like, all right, well, if I spent $2,500, uh, but eventually got to a place after $2,500 where uh, 3,600 people, or with $2,500, where 3,600 people um, converted at that higher rate, it would pay for itself. And that gives me kind of an operational budget to experiment with. But that's not actually telling us what the impact of rolling that out to our company would be. So I'm going to do some back of the napkin kind of math, or back of the spreadsheet, bottom of the spreadsheet math. Anyway, I'm going to do some quick calculations to kind of play around with different values of like what potential impact this could have on my company. So let's say out of our paid traffic, right? I'm going to just say I'm able to roll this out to 10% of the paid traffic and they now convert at 0.04%. All right. So point, uh, 0308. So that's 3.08% or uh, we'll say about, let's see, we're modeling zero. I'm just rolling it. Out. I'm not assuming I'm going to get a ton more people and getting a ton more people actually isn't super helpful. If you'll notice actually, uh, at the current cost and conversion rate, it goes down <laughs> per, per traffic acquired. So it's like actually acquiring people's not more helpful. I might actually get more people. Um, but how much might the cost to acquire a lead go down? Let's be pretty minimal. Like I'm assuming if I rock this ad or do a good job on this ad, maybe my cost per click might go from two to 1.9. So that's a 0.5%. 6,000, that's not bad. That was very conservative. Now, for instance, do I think that I can switch over only one tenth of my income to this new ad, this new high converting ad. If it really converts, like let's lean into it. Maybe some of our advertising is seasonal or targeted somehow at some non-TED specific thing. Um, we'll see, right? You might be able to lean into it. What if this were one and zero, right? Then, you know, I'd almost have a 4% increase. So like if I could roll this out as all of my ad spend, right? I am tripling my net income. <laughs> so my net revenue. So, um, right. Let's just pull it back down. Cause everything, again, everything I'm doing, I am being very conservative. So like, this is like, if I could do a 4% conversion rate on my paid traffic, that's, that's what would happen. So let's see what happens if we just rolled it out to 20%, right? Twice as much as I originally estimated. Right. 
right? My overall conversion rate would go up 5% approximately, and my cost to acquire a lead would go down 1%. Still worth $14,525. So uh, you can see comparing to the other finding strategies that we modeled, the basically recheating or posting Tim Ferriss stuff on keto uh, strategy or other social network strategy um, or the um, more targeted ads. This is the one that would have the biggest impact on my business and I could spend 2,500 in figuring out that ads, whether that was like pure ad spend, whether that uh, ad spend on top of the cost to acquire, right? Because we, we'd modeled that. Um, so like if some ads underperformed and ends up costing us, you know, 2,500 in our, in our small, or like we have ads that don't convert at all, it ends up costing us 2,500 additional dollars and not getting us, us much traffic. As long as we end up in a place where we have that 4% conversion ad, then we're still golden and we're still getting uh, over 14,000 in net revenue. And that is approximately a 33% increase in net revenue. So uh, again, you don't need crazy things. This did end up being a 5% conversion increase. If you wanted to be more conservative, you could lower that, but we looked at pretty reasonable things. Like, right, if we even, if we found that 4% ad and rolled it out to 20% of, uh, replace 20% of our current ad spend with that. This is the impact that we might get. Now, maybe you find a 4% converting ad, not like, again, click through on the ad, but like of the traffic that gets to our website from the ad that's already clicked through 4% of them buy, right? If that's pie in the sky, you could say 3.5%. You could play around with that, that number and adjust it to what you think is reasonable and the point is not to go pie in the sky. In fact, you know, maybe I will adjust that down, but maybe I'll also spend less money on it or something and 12,100 is exactly what I get, right? Do what you feel comfortable with, but you don't have to go big. And now I'm using that 4% uh, relative conversion rate, right? The 0.12% absolute increase in my conversion rate, um, and which is not my normal suggested one to 3% improvements for people, uh, partly because I calculated it out and it seemed really reasonable and I'm bringing myself way back down in my various estimates of, of what I could do. But if you're just, uh, again, you can also use this just to wing it and get a sense of like, well, what would happen if I did this? What would happen if I did that? Uh, one thing that's helpful is to see, just play around with it and see the levers. So like, how much more money, how much money do I make if I get 1% paid traffic? Well, I get uh, negative. <laughs> All right, what happens if I get 1% conversion rate? I get almost $3,000. What happens if I get a 1% decrease in a cost to acquire lead, 2,400, almost as much as 1% conversion. So it's starting to show you what levers you can push on and that might influence um, which strategies you choose and how you choose to implement those strategies. So there you have it. It does not take huge changes necessarily to find 5,000, 10,000, or even more in your net revenue. All you have to do is figure out which aspects of your income stream affect your bottom line the most and then focus on a strategy that will help you address that. Again, we're leveraging our user avatar so that while we're doing all of this, we're understanding and serving our customers better and making more money. Go ahead and fill out the speak their language section of the business income spreadsheet. I can't give you the magic words to make your customers buy, but I can give you the formula for finding it, right? Remember, understand X factor of your user avatar better, deeper. You've already done that earlier in this course and apply it to Y strategy, all right? So 
In this example, we went over ad spend, header, and image, a specific example of how you would leverage your understanding to improve the headers in your ads and forecasting an achievable increase. And so now you have something to focus on, you have a specific goal, you don't have to freak out. Um, we are fighting that temptation to be overwhelmed and procrastinate or be overwhelmed so we jump from uh, tactic to tactic without really making any gains, all right? And we're bringing our focus down to one area. Now, we still have to compare this strategy with our strategies from finding an avatar or crafting a more valuable offer or re-engaging customers. We want to compare all of those things to know which business area of our uh, which area of our business to focus on. And uh, those videos on crafting a more valuable offer that you can charge more for and re-engaging your customers are coming up next. And I will finish this series also with a video on how to do the implementation because obviously that is still critical. I can give you a formula for finding success, but the actual journey to success will require some practice and I will give you some tips at the end of this series.